All right, everyone, welcome back to another Team Kitchen Fable video. Today, we have the Team Championship League match against Team Foundry. This is Alberto Miracle from Team Foundry versus our very own Ruby Russell on Bravo. Uh, this is a classic matchup, uh, Dash versus Bravo, as our team's resident Dash player. Uh, I've also got uh, Haziel here with me, who's one of our... Uh, He's a reformed Bravo player. He doesn't really play that much Bravo anymore, but uh, he's got expertise on the matchup. So he's going to be here uh, commentating with us. What's up, Haziel? Yeah, nothing much. I'm actually pretty excited to watch this match. Um, Ruby over here is like an S-tier Bravo player, and Alberto is an S-tier Dash player. So this is going to be a pretty fun match Fun match to watch. All right, let's hop into it. Um, so I... Yeah, let's get us. Yeah, so all right. So it's looking like, fortunately for Ruby, he's going to be starting on the play, which is fantastic because if he can get some dominates off uh, in leak damage, that's kind of the key here early on, I think. Um, when I'm playing as Dash, I really don't want to be seeing Bravo leak damage uh, because if he can leak enough damage, uh, when I get to the end game, it doesn't matter how many items I'm at. If I get dominated when I'm at three health and I've got nothing to defend with, I'm in trouble. So that's a oh. fairly good turn one to get a Command and Conquer in Arsenal. Uh, hope for pummels and uh, moving on into the matchup there. For sure. And this is definitely a matchup where like it goes down to the wire with the life totals. Like especially if like everything like hitting one by one every time. Yeah, we see Alberto choose to pitch the command and conquer here. Um, I wonder what he's going for. Uh, oh, he's pitching into shooting. Okay, very nice. And I think he probably gives go again and puts out the purifier. Yeah, and I think he's gonna hold that spark in arsenal and try to get another item out next turn. That's what I'm assuming he's going for here. The... I think it was a Ruby good. Here. Yeah, I think yeah. it was a good play by Ruby to, uh, to block last turn. He didn't really have anything that he could do. There's no rhyme or reason to the dominate. Um, I think command and conquer is pretty effective here. Uh, it's pretty timely, especially since. Alberto is going to have to give up some cherished resources uh, to be able to use the spark next turn if that's what he wants to do. So not a not a bad start for Ruby. That is true. I think the only like uh, downside probably from just like a value perspective is probably just like how he his hand he'll be left probably with crushed a week in hand. That would not be good Arsenal, but. Given his options, he definitely, I think, made the right choice with doing Command and Conquer and keeping that pressure on as best he can. Even bluffing the pummel here a bit. Is there a world where you just cycle it down with Bravo and Arsenal the Sigil? Oh, it, it looks like he's going to Arsenal the Sigil anyways. Um, yeah. Maybe he wants to be holding blues. He wants that guaranteed blue. Yeah, plus like um, holding onto Sigil, that's also just like permanently bluffing that that pummel for a bit um he has that leeway to go below his opponent's health if he still wants to to get value out of his skull cap and so it's just a timely use of the sigil could be beneficial at times for sure so alberto is going to just load up here and i think is he gonna pass is he gonna go for a teclo core uh okay so he's just gonna shoot maybe once here uh Unless he wants to pitch the sink down, I can see that being a being there as well. Yep. So he's gonna pitch the sink down. He de he decides, you know, I don't really need this. If I can present damage to Bravo early and make him uncomfortable, uh, I just want to get cards out of his hand so I can get that spark of genius out and put it at x equals two to find an item that I want. Uh, that's what it seems like he's going for. Yep, that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to load and shoot for three again off the plasma pistol buff. And uh, and I think Jake... 
probably blocks here. Yeah. Um, Jake is going to block. And what do you do as Bravo? What do you think he's gonna, he's going to do here? Just a classic Bravo turn, surge and surge and hammer, or just hammer for four? Unfortunately, I think hammer for four. Unfortunately, I think keeping that um, pummel is going to be pretty useful um, for sure. Like later down the line. Got it. So you're you're are you thinking he's going to keep it in hand? Do you think he's going to play the sigil and put the pummel in arsenal? I think he's going to sigil and put the pummel in arsenal, but also yep. Um, he's gonna do it. Um, there is sometimes a risk of like a pummel like being stuck in Arsenal for a bit, but in this matchup where like he's like has to be really aggressive, it's kind of a lot easier for him to get that pummel out of Arsenal. I think in this matchup compared to others. Yeah, and it's looking like wow, that's a very unfortunate hand. Uh, given that Alberto kind of lost tempo there, uh, he was stuck with the D react in hand, the spark of genius in Arsenal, and. Uh, that was that was all he had, and now Ruby does not have an attack, uh, so I think he maybe just goes for the Terra Sunder on the hammer, is what I'm anticipating. I, I, that does feel like the most efficient play here. Yeah, I think that would be the best call for sure. Yeah, because Slogism and Unmovable do, do each cost three, so that is going to trigger Anathos up to seven, and I think from Alberto, I, I think we see the Unmovable out of hand. Uh, as the most efficient set of resources, but I could be very wrong here. Maybe we do see armor come out so we can finally use that spark of genius. Yep, and it's looking like that's exactly what's happening. Uh, is I think he's going to spark of genius at X equals 2, pitching the zipper hit and the combustible courier, and he's going to get that unmovable in arsenal preparing for crippling crush spinal crush all those nasty turns that uh that bravo can have and i think that that's a great play by, by alberto i think um effectively using those kinds of resources is what's going to make the difference um but it does look like the dominate gets the best of alberto and he is going to be forced to discard off yeah the that, was, that was very um definitely good for that to happen right there you also get some move out of hand as well wait that's actually an, that's an illegal play i think oh um, wow. because the terra thunder yeah they pull it back and yeah oh, okay. so so for those watching jake does also make an illegal play in the future and i think it does skate by so there's nothing wrong with that um it does happen uh but and and we also don't have the audio here so i think maybe they were like joking around uh these guys are good buds uh they've played quite a few games together so, all right. So it seems like we're rolling back everything. We've got the dominate. Uh, I think Alberto realizes that he gets to choose what he discards. So I think that's what what the uh, he picked those back up for. Yeah, and I think holding the unmovable. Oh, he pitches the unmovable, saves it for the late game. Uh, spoiler: I, I haven't watched this, but I do think that unmovable makes a difference by the end of this. Um, so keep keep your eye on that one. Uh, sometimes it's 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 can feel suboptimal, but just getting your the cards you need uh, for later in the game uh, is the right way to play it. Uh, very good pitch strategy there. And we see another Terra Sunder come out. That's the third Terra Sunder um, in the deck. One of them was pitched down last turn. And he's gonna get a Rouse and Arsenal, which will be like. Potentially good for his next turn as well if he can draw into the cards needed to activate it. Yeah. So so far he he's having really good momentum despite Alberto already having like two plasma purifiers out. So right now he's looking really good, thankfully. It looks like Alberto's finally gonna give up and go for the Teclo core. Mm. Uh, he realizes that uh, Jake is just presenting too much pressure, too many on hits, too much leak damage that trying to get four resources to play a spark of genius is too much and this is what's great about teclocore i love teclocore as a dash player is alberto just drew into another spark of genius meaning he can block with two cards from hand pitch a blue load his pistol and still get that x equals two spark of genius so that's what i'm going to be anticipating here uh we do see the rouse the ancients play come in um, I will be curious to see how uh, Ruby chooses to play it. Um, he 
did not have a surge last turn, it appears. And um, so Spinal Crush and Pummel are both out of the realm of possibility. I wonder if Ruby will try saving one of his cards for later. Probably, oh, he's going to Pummel it straight up. Well done. Um, he's going to force some D-Reacts out here. Uh, I do believe that, uh, yeah, Alberto does have what it takes to stop this with the sinks and arsenal in hand. Um, so really, really solid play. I think that that Teclo core search might have been the play of the game by Alberto if he does end up pulling this out. Um, really well done. Yep, so we're going to see, I think, yeah, we are going to see what I had anticipated, which is Spark of Genius at X equals 2. Uh, I would imagine at this point for another induction chamber. And from here on out, Ruby's going to have to have consistent pressure or we're just going to see Alberto dish out, you know, 12 damage turns off of a off of uh, just the pistol not including yeah. any boosts and unfortunately ruby has a very awkward hand at the moment it's gonna be interesting to see how he manages to like kind of make best use of like this and he'll probably have to be very reliant on how he pitch decks it um one move he can take is at least maybe odd muscle and because that way it's like out of hand well, and then like keep in mind he yep. does have the spinal crush in arsenal so we could very well just see a spinal crush, uh, another surge, and one of those cards making it down to arsenal. Um, I, I that is true. He could like do that. Yeah, it would be a spinal not dominated, um, which would still be a good pressure for sure. What's the cost on out muscle? It's two, right? It's um three, I believe. Oh. It is three. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's three, it seems it seems a little. Oh, so this is the illegal play. This is the. Uh, mm. He's only paying five and a surge for this for this crippling crush, and I believe it was in his head to play that spinal in arsenal. Um. So, a lot of trust. Uh, each of these guys have for each other. Just kind of trust in the play that's happening. I think that happens a lot at a high level is it's it's you see what's happening you're like oh you know this is what's going on i trust that this is what's uh th this is legit and uh so we we did see that come out um which honestly i think that was the less efficient play i i i do think setting up another um surge and providing a spinal crush is a lot more detrimental to dash than a crippling crush undominated and then getting that crippling in Arsenal with a surge. Uh, if you see, you do see um, Ruby's hand right now. Uh, you'd be dominating a crippling crush into a, a dash with no, uh, with no defense reaction in Arsenal. Is is what would be happening. So, um, that that is pretty critical. Oh, for sure. Like. Um... And I would agree for sure that, like, getting in that crippling and arsenal, like, would be kind of, like, also a way of just, like, dealing out consistent damage. You get the spinal out, at the very least, gets cards as a hand, maybe D-reacts, and then, like, your crippling just gets stronger as the game goes on. Um, dominated or not dominated. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so it looks like Ruby is going to be taking... This is going to be that um, that 12 damage turn that we were talking about off of two plasma purifiers and two induction chambers. Um, the great thing about dash, uh, this, this uh, pistol dash, is that it can hold on for dear life. Uh, block with three cards, load up pistol with three cards, keep keep loading items until you're ready, and then come at them with t for 12 damage uh, with with only one card. It's a uh, it's really well done. I think I think if we see more late game items for Dash, I think Dash is going to be a real menace in Everfest season, but uh I'm doubtful. Uh really What do you think this is going to be an Anathos play? Surge Anathos off the out muscle? What do you think is going to happen here? I, I do think it's a potential just rouse and Anathos for 6 or potentially like um 
out muscle just to not have it in hand. Oh, um, looks like he's going to do the seismic, and yep, Anothos for six. Something that I think might have been also an interesting play might have been to um, Spinal, like create a seismic Spinal, and then that kind of leads him to Arsenal a different card and have that consistent pressure, whether it's the odd muscle or another card. But I don't. I think having a seismic two that he just did right now just helps create that potential of crippling next turn as well. Yeah, I do feel like when Dash, I, I think the play I would have done there is dominated the spinal actually yeah. mm -hmm. uh, because dash had nothing in arsenal so you know it's probably going to land or dash yes. is going to have to give up some equipment and to have a defense reaction uh given where the counters were at and if it did land uh dash would be forced to a not be able to block with anything from hand and b would be unable to load any items uh because you can only load one because each of those I, items is yeah. a go again item. I'd agree. That would give also like Ruby that breathing room he kind of needs to make sure he doesn't go two down the life total and like just keep on that pressure. Because yeah, like how you, like you say, there was nothing in Arsenal. Like he would have had a good chance to at least get armor out of the way, or at least just like get rid of go again and just have like an, another turn for himself. Yeah, and, and so I, I don't think what Ruby did was necessarily a bad play. I think he's waiting for when he's expecting Alberto to to be able to go off and trying mm -hmm. to stop it there. Um, and using the Rouse there, I, I don't really see that much of a problem with it because it is leaking damage, and you aren't always just going to draw into that Rouse turn. So if I had to play uh, Devil's Advocate, I would say uh, Ruby was probably right there. Um it's a it's that's a tough decision but as we see he's now drawn into debilitate and choke slam uh and yeah i think arsling the debilitate uh was a good choice is that a red cartilage or a blue that is a red spinal crush and a blue cartilage crush so Gotcha. Uh, he does have nine resources to play out here. Um, mm. yeah. And it does seem like if he wanted to, he could slogism into that uh, debilitate an arsenal with his active surge, maybe even dominate it, um, which is effectively a defensive play. But it does look like he's going to block a little bit and maybe wait out what Alberto is doing. Yep, we're seeing another set of just lower lower to the ground pistol shots here. Alberto has not triggered his plasma purifiers, so there's not too much consequence to passing. Oh, it seems like uh, Alberto did trigger them but did not tap them. Uh, so Ruby is still taking damage here. Yeah. So the play by Ruby there was even though he had a strong offensive turn, he knows that he can swing this debilitate and get the spinal in arsenal. So he was just trying to minimize damage and continue an output uh, towards Alberto. Get the spinal in arsenal. Nice. We're going to see Alberto just load up. And I wonder if um, I wonder if um, Ruby will almost in a way try to force the Spinal out of Arsenal so he could put the Tome in Arsenal as well. Um, therefore getting some life gain and also having a card to like apply more pressure. Like, Or what do you think will happen here i don't know well, i don't i don't if i'm the dash player i think i've got this in the bag at this point um bravo is not in a good spot uh i do believe alberto does have a defense reaction in arsenal and he's just kind of cruising right now uh he's having a great time uh it's it's really easy to just throw out plasma purified shots um you know he's presenting eight damage loading up a induction chamber 
And Alberto is playing this a lot differently than, and, and I think this is why Alberto is such a great dash player, is normally I wait to get my full 12 damage turn off before removing purifiers. Um, but I think, and, and I would just shoot for two, right? I would shoot three wide shots for two and uh, make Bravo uncomfortable. But Alberto says, no, I'm going to go for the four. I'm going to strip cards from your hand and still get that breakpoint damage of four. Um, which is, uh, something that I think I'm going to have to look into doing myself, uh, playing, playing, uh, playing dash. Yeah. It really helped accelerate the life total gap. Um, before like Jake had a really large life gain and now like Alberto has managed to close the gap pretty quickly. Yeah. Right. I'm trying to get the trying to split up those reds and blues on on jake's end the pitch stacking another another inf not optimal hand um with the toma find all and arsenal i do think the toma find all and arsenal is the saving grace here but alberto is continuing to apply that pressure um and it does appear that this is going to be uh Three low to the ground shots, uh, if I'm correct. Yeah, this is a very tough decision on Ruby's part. Yeah, he cannot. He's at the point where he cannot just um, throw a command and conquer out because it will get blocked, and. Um, Alberto will be happy to just pitch two blues and continue loading up. Um, fortunately for Ruby, uh, Alberto draws into three defense reactions and a command and conquer, all of them red. So if he does present this, if he does pummel this command and conquer, which is in the cards here, uh, it's going to be a very, very unfortunate turn for Alberto. This is, this is what you want to see coming off your Tome of Find All turn for sure. Oh, yeah, I'd agree. This is a very good um, pivot right now for, for Jake. Yep. Yeah, and Alberto knows that he can't block this Command and Conquer no matter what. And the pummel is going to be... Uh, it's really just going to rub it in, I think. Uh, this is a very, very tough go for Alberto. Uh, and it does seem that he doesn't want to give up his Command and Conquer. Uh, he did pass assuming that there would not be a pummel. So Alberto is going to take 10 on that play and lose two of his cards. That's very, very critical. Um, but having defense reactions in a scenario like this means he can just arsenal, load up a thing or two, and kind of move on from it. He's, he's still braced himself for Bravo's onslaught, and uh, he's got all the items he needs. So I still think... Uh, I still think we see Alberto in a very good spot here. Yeah, he has an immovable in Arsenal. It's like he's set up to at least deal with like Ruby's next turn. And like here we have a red disable. Um able to not dominate it, it seems. Yeah. Yes, which I, I think is probably okay. I think he does want to be stripping cards here and pre presenting raw damage. Although uh, yeah, and, and I he did not have the resources that dominate it, uh, which I it think is, is part yeah. of that decision. Yep. Ooh, we do see the hard to find all. Uh, I love how people are playing that card more often these days. Okay. Good in the Briar matchup for sure. All right, so I think Alberto's going to do what he's been doing most likely. Yep, he's going to present pressure. He's going to tell Jake. I am not going to uh I'm not going to let you have turns the way you want. I do not need to have a fully optimal turn. I want to present damage consistently and make you as uncomfortable as possible. This has been a very smooth game so far from both players, I think. Each of them is kind of seeing what they need to be seeing. They're playing to their outs. Um, 
Very well done so far. Okay. Again, four more damage. Um, and I think Ruby is going to take it and try to dominate this uh, this upcoming disable in Arsenal. Yeah, this unmovable is going to do a lot of work for Alberto. Uh, disable only, only coming in for nine, I believe. Red disable, uh, unmovable is going to block eight of that from Arsenal, and that's going to be very, very good. Uh, you also love to see that going into high octane. Um, this is going to be a very efficient turn uh, for for Alberto here. You really want to see the high octanes uh, around this time. Okay, so he is going to put perfectly block. Alberto does not want to let any damage leak. Um, I don't know if that's what I would have done, um, but I still think it's it's probably wise um, just to avoid any any crush effects or anything like that. But but at the end of the day, if you're getting crushed at four health, you're dead anyways. So I guess Alberto is absolutely correct correct there. Um, so two resources, a card draw. Uh, yeah, high octane so great, man. It, it really is. It's a, it's a great way to dig in and, and find more of your deck. Uh, if you haven't been able to get some of your items out, or if you have and you need to push that extra damage, that extra action point, uh, from boosting. It's just a great card, regardless of if you're behind or ahead. Um, high octane is definitely one of the better majestics in all of flesh and blood. Okay. So Alberto is going to get the boost off and he's going to say, I don't need my induction chambers. I'm going to use my extra action points to attack you instead. I've got two floating resources and I'm absolutely going to go for it. Um, I think that's an, a very effective use of resources from Alberto. He's going to be able to shoot twice and set up uh, another induction chamber, or dare I say, maybe he goes for the Achilles Accelerator uh, on this turn to force even more cards out of Ruby's hand. That is fair. Both players to sort of like getting really close to the sort of almost Kadachi lock life total where like every damage will eventually just be lethal and like always going to have to block eventually even also one or two potentially in the late game. Yep. So it's like really, really kicking up right now. Yeah. And if we do see another unmovable, it is going to be that unmovable I mentioned from early in the game that Alberto pitched down. Um, mm. And I think that'll make the difference because Anathos doesn't really do much uh, for Bravo in this matchup at this stage of the game because he will, you know, Dash can block two and pitch two to do 12 damage almost. And uh, Bravo still can block with three cards from hand and, uh, and take three damage in that scenario. So uh, I think it's Bravo that's on the Kadachi lock and Bravo that needs to get a dominate playoff um, or get this out muscle playoff that i think he's getting ready to play yeah the out muscle play will definitely be useful in this scenario um and like ruby probably also just hoping he kind of gets um enough resources or maybe a crippling soon enough where he can dominate and leak in more damage uh, before he gets a card in arsenal yeah Ooh. so yep there's that red unmovable uh and a yellow in hand um so he can realistically live through two dominated attacks here, but it's looking like uh, this is going to be a play uh, for leaking damage, trying to get cards out of hand, knowing that everything that comes out is lethal. Yeah, he he's not worried about getting pummeled up front. Uh, this is a fairly uncomfortable this is a fairly comfortable block for alberto 
I think he's going to accept taking two here so he can... I think he's going to unmovable this Anathos, the yellow one. Yep. And then he's going to arsenal that red. Uh, taking that two damage was very smart by Alberto. He knew what was going to be presented to him. Um, and he says, yep, it doesn't matter if you dominate me now. I have the best defense reaction to handle Bravo right now. Um, yep. So I think we're going to... We're going to see that come out, and then he should still have enough resources to present a very strong threat next turn. Uh, two purifiers and two shots is Kadachi lock. Um, that is four damage across two chain links and uh, very, very tough breakpoints for Bravo to deal with. Yeah, and Jake, unfortunately, too, drew into a staunch response. Makes for a very awkward um, block right there as well. Yeah. Fortunately, I don't think he's going to have to block with it. Um, yeah. He is going to play into it. Uh, yeah, I think he wants to keep the disable to dominate it. Mm, um, yeah. He did opt to go without an arsenal, though. I almost wonder, is it better to play? Oh, it, it, it is not better to play the disable because if the defense reaction in arsenal is a fate or a sink, uh, it does kill. Um, assuming that there was not a fade or a sink in hand. So I think going for uh, Cranial Crush is the right offensive breakpoint to get past most defense reactions. Uh, it just is unfortunate that it was a uh, an unmovable there. Um, yeah, I would have liked to see uh, maybe checking some graveyards, looking for what defense reactions have been played, although he probably does know. Um, he probably has been paying attention to it. Um so I think this, especially with the unmovable in hand and the slogism, I think this could be it for uh, for Jake here. Yep, we're gonna stop the breakpoint with armor. Um, yeah, at this point, dash is pretty much out of reds, most likely too. So even if like Anathos for four isn't going to cut it next turn, even if Ruby does uh, kind of skate by this turn. Yeah. Dash with two card hand and the pistols is just like very, very um, red landless, especially this late in the game. Okay. Well, it, it does look like we are going to see a turn for, uh, for Ruby here. Um, oh, no, I, I misunderstood what Alberto was doing. Uh, Ruby does decide to go down to one so we can swing Anathos. Yeah, that unmovable was really awkward, unfortunately. Uh, forcing him to take an extra one damage, uh, which is going to make... Ooh, and the fate for scene. Yeah, that's, uh, that's writing on the wall. This is going to be, uh, this is going to be three shots for four each, and Ruby does not have the defense to handle this. He has four action cards that block for three each, and that is exactly what makes Pistol Dash so strong, is being able to push past those defensive breakpoints uh, consistently, unbelievably efficiently, um, and takes a really good pilot to manage the steam counter resources, to manage uh, the opportunity cost of playing items, holding a spark of genius in arsenal for how long do you do that um so really really well played by alberto uh really strong play by ruby as well leaking that much damage getting one of the dash best dash players in the world elo wise and and he has a ton of respect uh from everyone who's played against him so getting getting alberto down to one on such a rough matchup really really well done from ruby uh, any final thoughts from you, Haziel? No, yeah, like I definitely think both players played very well. It was very exciting match to watch, um, and yeah, I just think like this is one like um, both players did really well. Essentially, yeah, very enjoyable. All right, sweet. Well, thank you to those of you guys watching. If you guys want to see more from T Team Kitchen Fable, subscribe, like. We've got tons of guys on the team doing commentary as i'm sure you've seen we've got player profiles done by the competitive hubs very own tyler broughton 
and we are going to have more team championship league games against team foundry and other teams in the very very near future also go check out tower number nine's twitch channel where he'll be streaming some of these games live you can go see the live recording of this you won't be able to see the player's hands but you can see a live recording of this on tower number nine's twitch channel and for all things competitive flesh and blood stick around with team kitchen fable we will see you guys later peace